Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News analyst Emmanuel Ifeni. Good, Good morning, morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Ruben. Good, Good morning, morning Friday. Friday. Morning. Yes, that's <laughs> Friday. Ojinika is not here today. <laughs> yes. That, that's usually reserved for our segment, but it's okay. Yeah, we'll we start. Always wish you also a happy Friday. Yes, we start the review with this day Nigeria's newspaper of record, the lead story and backcomber. No consumer provision for interim government. It's nonsense. It's an idea not feasible under Buhari, says Lalong. CD dismisses it as unwarranted, unnecessary, subversive. DSS report is fake. Plot to arrest Atiku Obi alleges Frank. Now, of course, the reactions to uh, trailing the statement from the DSS concerning plots by some persons known to the DSS supposedly to truncate the democratic process and form an interim national government, as it were. Now, the newspapers are reporting this story. Agbakoba of course, has uh, dealt with this matter before. Recall that in April 2022, uh, elder statesman, legal luminary, Afe Babalola, uh, came up with this idea that we should suspend all the plans for election and work towards an interim national government. And of course, the, that uh, idea was shut down then by all and sundry. But again, after the democratic process has taken its full uh, circle, well, perhaps in, in, in full gear, you want to say, because, of course, the tribunals and the courts are still there for the uh, gladiators to scale through, as it were. And this idea of interim uh, government popping up somewhere and somehow has taken a life of its, of its own in discussion. Now, other newspapers are also reporting the story. The Daily Sun newspaper, interim government allegation ploy to arrest opposition. Atiku is saying, challenges DSS to name those behind plot. Count us out, says Labour Party. Such plan will be a major setback at Bakoba. While the Nation newspaper are also reporting the story, Sage, that's Professor Ishe Sage, Agbakoba <coughs> Femi Falana, interim government unknown to law, legal giants seek trial of plotters, Lalong, interim government schemers, daydreaming. Of course, there is a quote there. We must all reject this nonsense and respect our constitution, which has no provision for interim arrangement. Of course, quoting Olisa Agbakoba, former uh, president of the Nigerian Bar Association, senior advocate of Nigeria, who has also weighed in on this matter. Now, the Guardian newspaper, obedience protest in U.S. Labour Party distances itself from interim government plot. APC kicks as U.S. approved White House Park for anti tinubu rally. Lalong, interim government advocates are the dreaming. Name, arrest those behind plot. IPAC chairman, Agbakoba charges DSS. DSS alarm, ploy to arrest Atiku Obi before May 29, Frank alleges. Huriwa, nothing wrong using legal means to stop Tinimbu's inauguration. Call for interim government treasonable wants SDPs at Debayo. Supreme Court dismisses Mwajuba's suit seeking to disqualify Tinubu, SPV Saga, CCB invites Keyamo to substantiate allegation against Atiku. Yes, of course, the obedient movement in the US, they've secured permits to hold a rally at the White House Park. And of course, the APC wing in the US are also kicking. I'm sure before long, perhaps they too want to get their own uh, permit to hold a pro tinubu uh, rally, as it were. Rally, demonstration, part of the democratic process. And people 
should have the right to do so, whether in the U.S. or in Nigeria. Where Nigerians, wherever they live, of course, at home, it is part of the democratic process we have to restate. Now, the Punch newspaper, IU, PDP nullifies IM, fire says suspension, sanctions, word ESCO. Opposition party lists ex casino governor for others as peace moves begin. Party reverses autumn summons to face the disciplinary panel, six members unity. Yes, the acting chairman of the PDP. Well, he said it on the day he took over that things will look differently. And giving Philip to that uh, statement by nullifying the suspension of some party bigwigs, including former Ekiti State Governor Ayo Fayoshe, former Senate President Ayim Payos Ayim, amongst others. Perhaps PDP not doing what they ought to have done a long time ago, trying to reconcile, putting the house in order. We'll see how it pans out, whether Ayo will challenge uh, the court process come April 17, when that expert motion uh, will co come up for hearing again, the substantive uh, uh, matter in that gave rise to that expert order, asking Ayo to stop parading himself as chairman of the PDP. Now, the new Telegraph newspaper, Kwan Kwan So, if Buhari wanted free, fair, credible post, he'd have it. Says Tinimbu can't lead without people's acceptance. INEC abandoned consumer responsibility. Senator Yusuf, Supreme Court dismisses Mwajuba's uh, suit challenging Tinubu's candidacy. Yes, of course, yesterday, Rabiu Musa, Dr. Rabiu Musa Kwan so the presidential candidate of the NNP, NNPP, yes, the New Nigerian People's Party, uh, had uh, made a speech yesterday at the next meeting of the party, the first, I think, after the uh, general elections, to review things. And Kwan Kwan so was saying that, uh, yes, he was accusing President Muhammad Buhari uh, when he said everything ends at the table of the president, if he wanted a free, fair, credible election, he would have gotten it. He just looked the other way, the other side, and the criminals took over. Nobody is celebrating the victory of the election, except Kano and Abia states. But I think there have uh, been celebration in a number of states, uh, not just Kano and uh, Abia. Well, that's what he's saying. That's Rabiu Musa Kwan Kwan So insisting that the security agents didn't do much. Those asking people to go to court know that the courts are their home. That's Rabiu Musa Kwan Kwan So, a presidential candidate of the NNPP. Now, the daily, no, there's one more story in the front page of the New Telegraph. Yes, Matawale. How new Naira policy cost me re-election? Yes, uh, Belo Matawale, the governor of uh, uh, Zamfara State. Yes, he lost to the PDP candidate. And he said, well, the, the new Naira policy cost him. And he also added that so much, 300 uh, lorries of soldiers were sent to his, to his state. Soldiers that were not sent to a state when bandits took over a state were sent on election day. Well, he did not mention that he also jumped ship by abandon, abandon, abandoning the party that on whose platform he rode to power. Was that a factor? Yes, because his deputy then refused to join him in that uh, uh, porting move when he came to the ruling party. Well, he did not favor him. Now he's blaming the president, he's blaming the, uh, the deployment of soldiers, and of course, the Naira policy for his defeat. The Daily Trust newspaper, Labor Court on Federal Government on Petroleum Subsidy Remover. Nigerians worried over on clear palliative plan. Cost of living to rise by 200%, experts are predicting. Incoming administration must make refineries rail system work. Now, the other thing the new administration must deal with, Nigerian Tribune reporting, 
DMO, Nigeria's public debt rises to 46.25 trillion naira. Well, that is excluding the ways and means, which is also a big body. Huge headache for the next president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, president-elect. I'm sure his team will be scratching their heads on how to deal with all the major issues in the polity. Now, the Vanguard newspaper reporting Nasima orders least risk to economy as debt uh, hits 46.3 trillion. Debt service falls 8.2% to 3.87 trillion. That's debt servicing. Debt stock within acceptable limit, of course. DMO insisting. Now, the Business Day newspaper, Nigerians champagne consumption hit it year high. According to this report, Nigeria's uh, champagne import volumes increased by 15.3% to 644,452 bottles in 2022. That is excluding the 40-year-old whiskey and the 30-year-old brandy that also came into the country. <laughs> Ruben, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how much you consume out of that, Ruben, but that is not, that is part, that is state secret. Well, the foreign newspapers, quickly, the Times of London, retire early if you did not go to university. That is the new policy there. Yes, pension age rise to 68 years for rest, still on the table. Now, graduates will work for longer under the plans to allow people in manual jobs to claim their uh, state pension okay. earlier. And yes. that little thing that we've got to go, that's because the British authorities want to reduce spending, put a cap on pension spending, reduce it to about 6% of GDP. But I was going to talk about rainfall in Lagos State. Yesterday, there was a conference by the Lagos State Ministry of Environment and uh, you know water resources. And the message there is that there will be more rainfall this year from April 1 to December. The highest rate of rainfall in the last decade. So there will be flooding, there will be a lot of uh, challenges, uh, but they say they are getting prepared and that they are collaborating with NIMET and uh, those people that release water from uh, Onion Dam <laughs> every year. <laughs> and uh, people living in lowland areas Should should move, move upland. Well, I hope it won't be the same story as we had last, last year. Thank you very much, Emmanuel and Fanny.